Welcome, one and all, to the inaugural England Handball Highlight Show, brought to you by Live Sport Now and Yorkshire Sport Media. My name is Jack Oliphant, and today we're going to be taking a look back on Olympia versus West London Eagles in the Clash of the Capital, Part 2. It may be the clash of the capital, but there's no getting away from the fact that it is top versus bottom. West London Eagles trailing Olympia by 10 points in the standing. They're hoping that today that gap can close just a touch. Having a look at the West London Eagles team sheet now, we must look back at the London GD defeat they endured a couple of weeks ago. Kukaskas is certainly a player to be keeping an eye out on. He scored five goals against GD, while Wang Tuk To also scored three. Olympia's last outing saw them beat Cambridge 38-25, to and two players that scored eight goals between them in that game were Trinez and Chowder. They'll be hoping to equal, if not better, that record today. So it's the clash of the capital part two, top versus bottom, Olympia versus West London Eagles. But trust me, it is not as one-sided as those stats would have you believe. Catch all the interviews at the end of the game, and your commentators for this evening are Jack Oliphant and Ian Waterhouse. And here we go. All right, so the throw-off has happened, and it's Olympia on the attack, going right to left. And uh, of course, Eagles first to defend. Here we go. Game on. I'm looking forward to this, Jack. Absolutely, yeah, and a brilliant bit of sportsmanship there as well. Obviously, they have a little bit of tack on the ball. That is uh, basically a sticky resin, and uh, it's just important that everybody gets a touch of the ball beforehand. Great pass to the line and a good lob as well. Oh, Got a touch to it to the uh, West London Eagles goalkeeper. They couldn't keep it out. It remains 1-0 to Olympia. We are nearly five and a half minutes into this first half. Yeah, we've seen a lot of forced backcourt passes. It's a good movement of the ball there, and a fantastic step, and there's the first oh, goal for Eagles. And it's a really good step by the left winger, but as soon as I see his number, that is the number 10, that's Zan Podolvik. A great bit of skill by him, puts it to the back of the net of the Olympians. What all? Bit of ball movement again. It's, uh, we've seen this move a couple of times, and there we go. This time they just had that extra little pass and found the space. They started quickly, though, Eagles. We're straight back into another attack. 2-1 to the Olympia. Also, the only thing is, if you make a tackle, you've, the defender's got to be in between the goal and the ball. Uh, you're not allowed to tackle behind. You're not allowed to pull the shirt from behind or anything like that. Oh. Good goal there. That's what we saw. And uh, therefore, you get a two-minute suspension for the player that committed the foul. A bit like ice hockey in that way, sort of thing. I'll tell you something, I'm not too sure who number 22 is for Olympia. If you could tell us, he's got a fierce throw on him, hasn't he? Yeah, well, that was Doris Chowdhury, who uh, we were just speaking about before. One of the players to definitely be looking out on. They move to the right wing, that's the line player. He's moved to the wing, and there he is again. Just running onto that pass and straight snap the arm back, and the ball ends up in the back of the net. Really well done. That's Chowdhury again, top goal scorer for Olympia. Again, though, Eagles trying to transition quickly. Into the second phase of their counter attack, but they've lost it, and that's the danger if they attack quickly. It's out, and it's up the oh. bar, and into Thomas, and back into the back of the net. And of course, it's that man, Darius Chowdhury, brilliantly done, although arguably a shot off target, ended up in a goal. Well, and almost in the blink of an eye, the gap has gone from being tied to a, a two advantage to Olympia. Oh, we have a timeout now, don't we? So uh, the teams get uh, a number of timeouts, don't they? Explain that. Yeah, so uh, a team is allowed three timeouts each over the course of the game. Uh, however, you are only allowed one per half, so you're allowed one in the first half, one in the second half. If you don't use your one in the first half, you can't carry it over to the second half, so you can't use three in the second half. Well, we are pleased to say we're joined by Yorkshire Sport Media this afternoon, and we're going to be able to be putting some highlights out throughout the week of this game as well. So we're throwing everything at it, trying to give handball as much exposure as we possibly can. And with that vein, please do like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can to the stream to try and get more eyes on it. The more eyes we get on handball this weekend, the more it'll help going forward as well. We want to continue this on live sport now. Yeah, we do. And a big thank you to Tom, of course, uh, from the Ultra Media. But there we go. The Eagles pull another one back, as we can see. Yeah, really well worked by uh, the Eagles there. Just, again, opening those gaps up, doing the basics well. Aggressive on the defence. Maybe not giving Eagles the respect they sort of think they deserve, uh, what we think they deserve at the moment. And again, a sloppy, open, easy oh, pass is recovered. Attack. And a great goal there. Fantastically well controlled. He did well not to fall over. To be honest, and that was the number six from West London Eagles, Alan Cap. Brilliant uh, interception, 
and then did well, as I said, not to fall over and finish the goal. Oh, incredible stuff there, really, really good. Yeah, looking for a foul that was never coming, forcing the shot. The uh, substitution the Eagles trying to calm them down just a touch, but Eagles aren't listening. They squeeze through the gap and oh, it's another good goal yeah. by the number 10. And it's one of the prettiest of, uh, prettiest of finishes that the Eagles are rolling out here. But it is clearly quite effective. That was Zan Podoknik. Line, again, that's something you don't need to do. That's rushing it. Forcing it to the line is a bit of a, not an odd tactic. It happens a lot, but you just need to do this. Ball speed, get it out to the wing. Perfect example oh, of how to wow. score against a team that is a player down. Well done to Eagles, doing L the basics and doing them well. It does move to 11 all, and you just can't split either side right now, can you? Attack with intent. If you don't, the referee basically holds the hands up for passive play and it's effectively a shot clock. There we go, it's really heating up now. Oh, isn't it? there the we go. All over the place, but Olympia take the lead again. Right, now we just literally two seconds on the clock. And that is um, and that, that is, is the half time. Half time. Wow. Uh, so 13-12, uh, Jack. What do you make of that? I'm very, very impressed. To be honest, I'm impressed overall. It didn't look like a, um, a top versus bottom clash. It looked like a solid sort of top of the table, sort of mid-table clash. Really good ball movement from both teams. Fantastic defence from the Eagles. I have to say, uh, I know they're losing, but really they were the underdogs and. You got to give props where it's due. Olympia have been as solid and as good in the ball control as you could expect them to be, and yet Eagles have kept them out. So, very impressed with both teams. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the second half progresses, and if Eagles can keep it up, because I'm sure Olympia, there'll be some words in there, won't there? They, they feel that they don't, they shouldn't be this close. Um, there's still a player down for the next seven seconds or so, but that'll, they'll probably just hold on to the ball until that seven seconds are up. And uh, that's exactly what they're going to do. Here comes um, the Eagles player. Now they're back to full complement. And they can start to charge their attack up. The uh, centre number four just starting to call the plays out. Initiate the trigger movements. They're congesting that centre of the field. Ooh. And it's a good save. <laughs> start them early though, Ian. That's what you've got to do. Exactly. Oh, exactly oh, that. Exactly that. Somebody not used to attack and he's been giving it straight back. Another step and a oh, ball shot at the end of it. I think it was a bit of both, both Eagles players going for the same ball there, wasn't it? And it caused yeah, the, and caused one the of them ended up being sent off as well over a two minute suspension. And really, Olympia got away with that because that was two very poor shots. This is uh, last time out against London GD. Yeah, so it's got to be taken for the seven metre spot and it's dispatched rather efficiently into the bottom left hand corner. This means Olympia can be very aggressive. It gives an option for a line player to come in from the wing though, which is what they're trying to make do with now. It goes to the wing and it's a oh, great wow. shot with the right hand from the right wing. And that's the number nine of Metri or Metri. That could be a high tackle. We could be in trouble here. Appreciate a round of applause from the crowd here. Great step, but he's thrown it away again. We didn't see the number nine. Oh, oh great, great break. Try. Yeah, there we go. So all of a sudden, this game has turned very, very open. And Olympia have called a timeout. We just need a second to dissect now. I wish we had replays. Because there were so many turnovers then, so many fast breaks, it was hard to keep a track of. I think sensible move by the Olympia coach to call a timeout here. They were just starting to... Uh... Well, the Eagles getting in there, a lot of momentum here. It's... Yes, yeah, exactly. I mean, we've got to remember, Olympia, they are a sensational team. Uh, and for the first time, for the very first time, West London Eagles take the lead. Dispatch the penalty with a plum as well. So we've got four penalties so far, all four of them scored in the match. Oh, oh great timing. step gate, what fake. And that's the sort of raw talent that number nine can bring us, I suppose. We haven't seen it enough from Trinis. Taken anything from them in this game, although he's just been spanned and it's oh. a great defence, they oh, could be on the pass break here. This could be a big moment, two up for us, London Eagles, and it's saved, no, it's gone in! Wow, what a turnaround in this game. It's sort of travelling, so you can't give the advantage oh, after okay, the player yeah. was fouled, so you sort of have to bring it back. So they keep the ball, oh, but that, 
Number nine again in our highs. I mean, if they, if they hadn't given the advantage, we wouldn't have been treated to that absolute yeah, rocket yeah. ship. 12 and a half minutes we are into this second half. At what point do you start thinking, actually, my word, we can win this? Well, or are they already there? To be honest, normally you get into this position and it's an underdog story and you think, oh, they could easily lose out. But it's another brilliant attacking display in goal by Kukaskas. So Olympia charging up their team now, Paul on the sideline urging his defensive unit to move from side to side oh, and it's another goal from Tanevis that's five for him now and charging back in front of the camera and it's a great move but it didn't come off for them Excuse me. There and they're go. going for the Long fast drive. break good what pass a what a pass and it's Olympia who take the lead again this is incredible do take care of that number nine for Olympia Matthias Trenez He's been far too good for them in this half. There's a little bit of wiggle room and it's going to be a penalty. Oh the only reason word. I can see of that, Ian, is because as he was shooting, there was a clip of his arm as the motion of shooting was happening. Number two, oh. and a save! Oh my word, first penalty, you're safe. And the keeper knows it, arms outstretched. And he's like, yes, come on. Number 12 for Olympia with a huge save. Movement from Toe there, he tried to squeeze the ball in, but he's ended up with a penalty. Very cheeky attempt. Oh, and the keeper saved it, and the crowd goes wild. He looks like he's uh, struggling a bit with his arm. Yeah, moving out to the left, right wing no side, and that's a strong goal. That's needed for West London Eagles. And it's not over yet, of course. I mentioned just under three minutes to go. Very tight scoreline, a good defence, but a rocket ship into the top left-hand corner. That's a great goal for the number 21 of Olympia. That's unsafe contact, he didn't hold him to come back. It's essentially a dump tackle that we've Well, he's just, just walking off, he's just walked behind us actually. He's heading straight to the uh, changing rooms here. Yeah, well, we'll so he's off uh, for the game. Can the Eagles take it? There we go. There is the big two minutes. Nothing in it. So keep in mind there's less than two minutes to go in. Uh, Eagles will have the play with advantage. They do turn over the ball. The goalkeeper's already come out to try and assist in returning that ball over. Listen to the Eagles, they look to be a little bit... Um, some players that want to go quickly. Some people want to slow it down, but they go quickly. It's moving out to the right wing. It's big. And it is big. Oh West London back. Eagles make it all Kurt, level. Like checking the score, please? I believe it's 27 all. 27 all with a minute and a half to pass in play. <laughs> Olympia with the big shots and it's a goal. It. I think they've run it right at the end. This has got to be the attack. This is a they've goal. They've got to score this. They've got to score to tie the game. It's a foul. A foul is given. They're allowed a free throw. They can't pass it. They have to shoot. This, this is the is final to tie throw of the, the game. game. To tie the game. And it's, it's the man who went down heavy. Oh, it's off the post and Olympia are winners by one. Win in the tightest of margins, I don't believe it. That is one of the most incredible, and I'm not talking about handball now, that's one of the most incredible sporting moments I've ever seen. And here, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> you took a few heavy hits there. Yeah. Now, Jack, our expert, has uh, voted you man of the match. I know it's probably not much consolation. It was such a close game. What was it like out on the court? <laughs> it was interesting. We play against one of the best teams in the league. Um, yeah, it was a good game you for us. You bloke yeah, yeah, didn't you? You, yeah, you were there, you yeah. guys. Yeah, it was, it was really good. But, I mean, we could have done better defensively. Uh, we missed quite a few easy shots and we didn't score a couple penalties, basically, which was basically a match. Two goals, two more goals, and it would have been a win, but, you know, there's some place to improve, so... Oh, well, some improvement. Uh, we were there, of course, for the London GD game yeah. uh, as well, and it kind of went away from you, that game. This one, you were in it right until the end. Could you, could you hear the crowd? Could you feel the emotion? Could yeah, you feel the, the atmosphere is amazing. <laughs> I mean, for a player like myself, it's like the best feeling to play in, a, in an arena like this. Um, yeah. I guess an amazing team, so yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite excited, but obviously a bit sad that we didn't win, but 
essentially we had quite a good game, I would say. Much better game than the last weekend against London GD. Yeah, look, congratulations okay, uh, on winning so man in the match. Not quite yeah. the result you want, but you guys were sensational. Thank you. Well done, I'm glad you're okay. Because we want to say, what a second half performance that was from you. Talk us through that finish uh, especially. I was two weeks gone because I have back problems. And I needed to be here today for the game and I done my best. You, well, you were brilliant. You scored about four goals in a row for, for Olympia. How fast, by the way, can you throw that ball? Have you ever measured it in uh, speed? I never measure it, but I think the fastest ball, 97 kilometers per hour. <laughs> but it wasn't mine. <laughs> so, yeah. What does it mean to get the win today? It was very tight. Was it a bit tighter yeah, than you thought it, it would be, actually? a hard game, a really hard game. We're missing a lot of people because of COVID. More people are injured as well. We've done our best. Yeah. We, we, we're still making some mistakes, but we're going to try to fix them. Yeah. Well, did the Eagles put up a bit of a, a harder contest than you thought they might have, bear in mind the league positions? Uh, well, it was a hard game for us. Yeah. And they really played hard, nice handball. They're really organised. They have a good goalkeeper as well. Yeah, they do. They certainly do. Our goalkeeper helped us a lot today yeah. as well. Well look, go on, go get some water aside, congratulations. Yeah. Start of the game, uh, look, a win's a win, even if you win it by one. Did you yeah. quite expect that resistance from the Eagles today? Yes, yes. I said to the guys from the beginning that it will be a tough game. Doesn't matter, you need to treat your, your opponent with like uh, respect and yeah. you need to, to play on the field. Today was a win, but we're struggling a lot. It's good, at the end of the day it's three points, so this is what, what yeah. matters. And it's well done, well done for the coach and the players from the other team. They really play very, very well today, it, especially it, the goalkeeper. I, I knew him. I say to the guys, like guys, be careful. They have a good goalkeeper. You need to shoot like down all the time. He's jumping, but looks like they, they lost the focus. And yeah, we missed a lot. At the end, we have plus one, so it's, it's, it's a good thing for us. For it's certainly well, on top is, of the it's table. It's a great advert for the game as well, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, with this kind of games, you feel like you are getting goal like few years. <laughs> Sweating yeah. a lot, emotion. Like even last last uh, last shoot was in the post, so I imagine yeah. it could be like a draw. Yeah. Looks like today we had luck, but we don't know in the future what will be. Maybe next game we will be on the, the, the <laughs> side. So well done for the team. It was a, like a derby in London. Yeah. So yeah. well done to them. Uh, congratulations to you Thank and you uh, well much, done guys. on the win. Thanks for talking to us. We really very good. really do appreciate it. So Paul, that was a dramatic game, wasn't it? At the end of the day. First impressions, the game's only finished five minutes ago, I know it's fresh. What were your emotions in the final minute or two? My emotions were obviously um, the excitement of obviously what the game turned out to be. Um, we were certainly the underdogs before we went into this game. And like I said in the beginning, you know, we were minus quite a number of players through COVID, so the actual the actual fight and, and execution of the game was fantastic um, on our on our behalf, you know. So um, Obviously, my disappointment in those last few seconds was, uh, was was pretty raw still because I thought that we could have taken that considering they're top of the league and we're bottom. So um, yeah, it was it was a fantastic advert for handball, I, I believe. So um, if there's players out there that want to come and play, then we're there. And also, the men are looking for a coach. If there's any fantastic coaches out there, I take this opportunity to ask you to contact our club. Um, we're a fantastic club, but um, yeah. To sum it up, it was um, frantic, but yet yeah, under control, and I think that everyone had a good time in there overall. I don't think anybody will want to come in and replace you as a coach following that sort of performance. It is uh, quite sensational, but I know you're only stepping in, obviously. We came down and we saw West London Eagles a couple of weeks ago against Great Day. Today was a completely different performance to what we saw against Great Day in terms of your aggressive defence and your turnover rates as well. What have you been working on in training or are you not going to give those sort of secrets away? No, there's, you know, there's no, no secret. You know, basically, is that we just implemented various routines within our defensive structure to make sure that everyone knew that what everyone was supposed to do, what their job was, and that they completed their job to the end and didn't leave it uh, half unfinished. Um, throughout the, throughout the defensive process, so I think that just just due to that, their understanding that enhanced their ability to defend as a unit together. So, as I say, no no secrets. It's uh, it was just a bit of hard work over the last couple of weeks. 
And there we go, Olympia taking all the biscuits there ahead of West London Eagles, who fought very valiantly and put up a fantastic battle. It certainly didn't look like top versus bottom to me. Northeast Manchester Hawks took a bit more of a convincing victory over the Carl Scholten Titans, 38 to 27. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage of that game for you, but hopefully in the coming weeks, maybe we'll get some from other games and maybe take a feature and a highlight show. We can see how it's impacted in the Men's Premier Handball League. Now Olympia still top of the table, obviously taking all three points. West London Eagles taking only a point after their loss. It does put them on level with Carl Scholten and Cambridge. Olympia leading the way ahead of Nottingham, but Nottingham GD all do have a game in hand, and the Hawks have two game in hand on the actual leaders. Right, all that's left to say is a big thank you to everyone who's tuned in. A big thank you to the clubs and England Handball for letting us get involved. Hopefully we'll be bringing you more Handball soon on Live Sport Now.